uh, the work that you need to do in us today, um, that you would keep us healthy, uh, that there would be moments, God, where we just encounter you in a unique and special way. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, I want to kind of prepare you uh, a, a little bit for just what we're getting ready to, to experience together. And and I, I love what Joni said yesterday, and I think this is so important, that uh, get out of your minds that you're a tourist. You are not a tourist in Israel. But uh, we are pilgrims. Because we're not here to observe we're here to participate. We're not here just to see all of the sights. We're here to walk where Jesus walked and to have an encounter with Jesus. And uh, and so one of the things, and I'm going to tell you this, uh, there's a couple times I'll tell you this this week, but I want you to begin to think about this. Is in your mind, you know, that, that you have read the Bible your entire life or you've heard Bible stories. And so you have some impressions of what you're going to see. You know, Now say yes. Yeah, I mean this is this is Joni was telling us about this, that in Acts chapter 10, this is where Peter shares uh, the gospel with Cornelius. And so this is this is years after the resurrection is the first time it comes. Well, it happens here. And uh, you remember in Acts chapter 10, it says, you know, God does not show favoritism, that the gospel is for everyone. The gospel is for all people. And uh, and so it's also, this is a funny story that, I, that happened. Oh no. Falafel, please. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Thank you. 
pomegranate juice
Ann and uh, Schumacher and Tim Hay. I want you to take your eyes on the right when you see the palm trees. To the left when you see the huge group of people. Okay, you got it? I want you to imagine that all you could do in the past, before the ADA just came, was to walk from right side to left side. You didn't see any of the You were with your... Or basically the same 1,000 times. Now this is impressive. It can uh, supply at least a thousand men a couple of years to survive. Um, we found when they were doing the dig, straw stuck in the skull. And remember, though this was one child, Again, in Bible prophecy, depending on your view of the end times, it is where the last battle on earth will be fought. This is the valley right here that it's talking about. Okay? And uh, um, I want to read to you a scripture out of Ezekiel chapter 36. And uh, this valley right here was desolate, it was barren, it was completely destroyed, and as you can see today, it is none of those things. Then it is beginning to grow again. So let me read that verse for you again. The, this land that was laid waste has become like the garden. So you are seeing prophecy beginning to happen with your own eyes. In, in Matthew chapter 24, it says, this is Jesus' words. Jesus says, but about that day or hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven or the Son, but only the Father. And so as we talk about, okay, when is the end time? When does Jesus return? When does all of time end? Uh, and when Jesus says, no one knows, God knows when this all ends. God knows when it's all coming to an end. Uh, number two, there is hope and current suffering. Again, Revelation was written to people who are in suffering. So they're, they're walking through that. Um, as, as I mention on Sunday mornings, oftentimes, what I know is everybody here, you're going through something. Some of you are going through suffering right now, and nobody knows about it that you're dealing with something, and uh, this is just a reminder that there is hope in the midst of suffering, that God is in control, that God controls the beginning and the end, and there is, this is the third thing, that there is a bigger story than our current situation. See, this is why Revelation, this is why the literature is given to us, is that God has a bigger plan, that God has a bigger purpose for you, and so you don't give up. And you keep going. So I, it is a reminder going, are we in the end times? Absolutely. We've been in the end times.
Just keep your eyes, keep your eyes at the, just look towards the tunnel, that's all. <laughs> look, look at people's heads ahead of you. It's nice and cool, I like that. A little refrigerator. Yom Nifla. It was, was a wonderful day, okay? In English, wonderful day. But in Hebrew, day, wonderful. So, when I say to you, Boker Tov, it's morning good. It's not good morning. Morning, that's the subject. And then you describe it. So, Spanish does this. So those who know multi-languages can see a similarity. So, Yom Rishon, first day. Rishon in Hebrew means first. The word for shin, second is Shani. So the second day of the week is Yom Shani. Third is Shli Shi. Third. Rebbe E is fourth. Hamishi is fifth. Shishi is sixth. And if I'm going to continue in that order, thinking first, second, third, fourth, what's seventh? Shivi E. <laughs> we never say Yom Shivi E. Never. Ever. It's always Shabbat. <coughs> so it is the only day of the week with a name. The others are days. I've got a bus load of people. He said they're all asleep. <laughs> <laughs> I looked. He was right. Because he was always looking in his mirror, look at the people. He was right. And I continued to talk. And he looked at me, what are you doing? I said, I was paid to talk. I'm talking. <laughs> I got back to the hotel. <laughs> and the people said, can we do this again tomorrow night? It's a bridge. Big green. 
So you would have uh, the Jewish scrolls would be right here. So Isaiah or whatever would be unrolled here. Um, the people would be would be sitting too deep. They would be sitting there, and then on the next level down, and the rabbi would be teaching from up here. And actually, when we get into when we see the excavated one, you'll see a there'll be a stone in the middle. That's usually where the rabbi would sit to teach. And so the rabbis always would you know they sat down to teach. And uh, so you'll see a stone in the middle. But this is a recreation. So this is a replica of what it would have looked like. And so then we'll see the excavated so part. Yes, yeah, so it is.
four pilgrims in the area of the Galilee. So he started to look around and he found a place called Hawaii Beach, right on the Sea of Galilee. This used to be Hawaii Beach. He bought the piece of property and once he bought it, normally what it, it used to be bungalows. Anybody know anything about construction? You kind of need just a little bit to do bungalows. So nobody knew that it was here. This was the synagogue. The synagogue was not just a religious building. It was the center of public life for Jewish towns. The very first room that you see here is the school. This is where the children would sit at the feet of the rabbi. And if you see that stone with a group, that's the mosque. The rabbi would bring out the school, lay them flat for reading, they didn't have bound books. And that's where he would teach scripture to the children on the pews, both the stone ones and the ones along the wall. The second room is where the main synagogue was. And you've got pretty much the same set. You've got two rows of stone and then the rows in the back. If you look to my right, there is a pile of stone right there. Can you see them? There's a sign and some stones that are piled up on each other. Those stones were taken from the synagogue. But that's where we found them. Remember I said that this was abandoned in the year 67? What happened in the year 65, 66? No, but good guess. The Romans were coming and persecuting the Jews. archaeologically in our times. Even if you're not biased like I am, <laughs> that's still... You also have some heart shapes. Hearts were not rendered as hearts back then. So we know that they're not hearts. We've got to figure out what they are. The best theory that I have heard is that they might have been some ivy meat or bread being broken. That's my personal favorite and I'll tell you why in a minute. But Room tour. is outside. Looking out to the Sea of Galilee.
Dinner spread tonight. Salad spread. Sorry. <laughs> Hi. Salad spread. And the desserts. Hummus and pita, red wine. Uh huh. Kibe, beef tongue, veal shoulder, lamb kebab, salmon, chicken liver. Attack.